So where's where's Sam? Right here. Can I tell? Can he say four fingers? Yeah. Okay. Four fingers. So thanks for joining after lunch. Uh, Franz is going to be talking about logs. This guy likes to run uh, Spartan races where you crawl under barbed wire and get shocked and beat with sticks and stuff. So when was your last race? Uh, last Sunday. Last Sunday. And yeah. he's still here. Can you believe? Yeah. He shouldn't have taken that risk before the conference. I know. I <laughs> so know. Uh, with that, I'll give a five-minute uh, warning at the end, and there should be time for questions. So yeah. thanks. Thank you, Richard. Wow. That's how, how does it sound? It's okay? Okay, now you know because I have a very po powerful voice. So, <laughs> cool. So, um, what's going on with, with your logs? What's behind this mysterious title, right? So, um, this is the agenda that we're going to follow. We're going to, to talk about typical um, tr troubleshooting issues or support issues or you know, um, typical problems that a support team or a development team would face. Um, then we will go to um, the essence of the of the talk that is centralized logging with gray log. I'm going to show you how to um, monitor and manage logs with with gray log. Does anyone know gray log? Is any, yeah, okay, cool. Um, who knows? Uh, ELK, Elastic Search, Log Stash, and Kibana. Okay, that's more popular, but maybe after this session you will think that gray log is a bit better. Um, and then we will go through a through a demo. Um, well, uh, I haven't introduced myself because uh, Richard did it for me, but I'm Fran Alvarez. I work in, in Ixus. Um, I'm in charge of the uh, office that we have in, in Spain, in Seville. And Ixus is a strategy Alfresco partner, is how they call it now. Um, yeah, as you, as you can see, we, we have plenty of experience, uh, a deep relationship with, with Alfresco. So yeah, we, we, we could say that we know a little bit of, of Alfresco. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go straight to the, to the point and, and go through some um, scenarios or some story to explain um, the, the, the need of, of, of this integration that we're going to present. Well, so this is a typical agile and software development life, life cycle. Could also be a waterfall if we think like the cycle is larger or just one iteration, but typically we go uh, we start with requirements, architecture, design, implementing, testing, deployment, and support, and all over again. Um, that means that somehow support is feeding the, the requirements. Um, requirements may come as, as features, you know, it's features because we want to uh, bring a new feature um, to the system because our customers um, or our users are asking for it. Or maybe we need to, to include some improvements. These improvements, they can be, say, user experience improvements or um, performance improvements, right? Um, or they can be bugs that for, for some reason uh, the system is misfunctioning in, in some areas or with some entry data and we need to, we need to put remedy on it. So improvements. Um, as in, you know, um, non-functional improvements. I, we want this part of the application to be faster or to be more secure or, or, or bugs. With this kind of entry data, this is not working as expected. Well, we need to understand what's, what's going on precisely in order to, to, to fix it, right? Um, if we can um, have some data, some, some logging data, in, in the system explaining the, the inputs and the outputs of, of the operations that we want to to look at. It will be easy to, to, to put a, a solution to, to create or to solve the improvement on the, on the back. Um, another interesting chart is, um, well, 
you already know this, but they say that the cost of fixing a, a, a bug in, in, in production um, is exponentially higher than what it would cost at design or, or development. There is a fair explanation about it, that is um, when, when a bug is, 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 is locked in, in production, you need to understand what's, what's going on, you need to um, put yourself on the, on the um, customer in the same, in the same page to see, to talk to the, the same language to, to, to understand the problem. Then you have to reproduce it because maybe, yeah, um, you are not in the same machine that uh, the customer. So potentially you, uh, you are not going to reproduce, li uh, reproduce it very easily. Then you have to replicate it in a lower environment so you can comfortably um, work through the, through the solution, create the solution, create the fix, test it do some regression as well because you need to make sure that you haven't broken anything and then do the deployment, right? So that's a large time consuming uh, operation and, and effort. So um, the more information we can, we can get in all these stages, um, the better. Um, and in parallel, you know, we are now listening about this new um, architectural uh, trends, uh, microservices, serverless, you know, everything is moving to um, a small um, pieces or a small um, services that perform extremely small operations. So you can distribute all over uh, a complex architecture and you can uh, scale up, uh, scale out some, some parts. Um, so you will end up having multiple different servers with um, uh, each own log for, for one of them. Maybe you want to do this even more complex um, um, and you want to have different regions or, or, or you want to have a massive cluster. Um, so in this particular example, I think we have 30 servers. Imagine that, I don't know, you are a, a guy who needs to fix a bug. Um, um, you need to look at, at log uh, at log files to see what's happening. Well, you will need to do 30 different SSH plus tail commands, and you know anyone could get nuts about it. Um, so yeah, this, uh, these are some challenges to support um, um, a solution, a, an application. Um, you know we. Uh, Reducing the time to narrow the, the issue, as I said, if there are, if we are uh, maintaining a solution that has 30 different uh, services or, or servers, you need to look at the at the logs in a in a very quickly manner. Then we want a more diagnostic uh, logging a, a approach. We don't want to have the need to look at the source code, right? We we should uh, be able to 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 see. Um, all the logs um, in, a, in, a, in a sequence um, where all the systems log information by time and you can follow the, the trace. Or y we need to um, provide or collect information inside. Imagine that someone logs you uh, uh, an issue saying, well, the system is running slow between this time and this time. You need to understand what's happening under, under the hood in this time frame to see if there is any reason why this, this could happen. Or maybe someone can tell you, hey, can you tell me um, how many assets were moved or downloaded yesterday? Well, you could easily look at that in, in the logs if, if, if the logs are, are writing properly. Or even, you know, anticipate or, or prevent um, a problem. Something is happening, so you received an alert or, or, or a notification to either uh, prevent the, the problem or um, quickly act to, to, to solve it. So, you know, um, we would like, ideally, we would like to have something, some, some tool, some, some application that somehow will help us to improve or, or mitigate all these uh, problems. Um, that's where it comes, um, Greylog. Okay, what's, what's Greylog? Well, essentially it's an application to manage uh, uh, log data from a, a central uh, location. So once you have all the logs um, 
coming to, to Greylog. You can easily parse them and reach them. Um, you can create uh, filters or, 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 or safe search um, to, to, to get the data that, that you need and the properties. You can cre create and configure dashboards and, um, and user-friendly uh, charts. You can have alerts, triggers, um, different notifications, notifications mechanisms. Um, you know, it offers both community and, and enterprise version, and, and it's open source. So you will see that it's a great tool to 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 bring to your architecture to, to solve the issue. Okay. Um, well, in terms of the architecture, Greylog is a client server architecture. The the client it's in the in the in the browser is a web browser um, user interface, and then there is the the server where the logic and the configuration is held. It's using MongoDB. MongoDB is storing the the configuration and the and the meta information, and then there is um, Elasticsearch, who is the one that is indexing the the log data. Um, the picture you can see it's. A very simple uh, architecture. The example I'm running in the in the demo is, is like this, but you can imagine that for a production purpose, maybe you want to um, scale and cluster it. And this is a valid um, architecture that represents that. So we could have three um, elastic search instances working as a as a cluster different servers, pointing to the uh, gray log server that they will have um, one MongoDB instance each um, acting as a replica set. And then you will have a load balancer on top of it. Um, and maybe uh, doing it HTTPS um, to, to, to provide more secure access on it. Um, I put this example because probably is um, the most recommended uh, distribution of the service, but you can think of a more uh, massive architecture with plenty of nodes. If you know Elasticsearch and MongoDB, you know that they actually scale um, very well um, and you can put up um, several nodes more. Um, in terms of the uh, Gray Log and Alfresco integration, you know I could have created a super fancy um, architectural diagram, but it is what it is, right? It's a very a, a, a very basic integration. You will just add a, a call GELF uh, logger. GELF is coming from Greylog extended log format. Um, so we'll ju you just need to um, uh, communicate our fresco and Greylog by UDP protocol or open up uh, a port. So our fresco will start streaming data through this port to, to Greylog and Greylog will have configured a, a listener in this port that will um, fetch the, the data. Um, so in order to configure this, this integration, I'm, um, I'm planning to, to show you how, how, it's, how it's done. We need uh, these only four items. Um, so we'll go through through all of them now. Um, Greylog, um, as I said, Greylog is um, elastic, MongoDB, um, and a server. Um, there is a bundle that you could download, but you know we're trying to be a bit more more trendy. So um, we have created a, a, a Docker uh, Compose uh, file that will. And bring up um, a system that contains um, uh, three three different containers: uh, one for um, Elastic, one for MongoDB, and, and another one for Greylog server. Um, I've uploaded this in my um, GitHub account, so I will give you access later on. But anyway, it, it's this. It's not more. This is the Docker Compose file. So you will just need to run um, this command in your console. Um, 30 seconds later, magic happens. Um, 
al fresco, well, you know how to get al fresco, right? Um, uh, if not, I, I'm here to, to help you out, but you know, we can use the the bundle installer and, um, and install it. This is what, what I did. I used the com community 5.2 version in this example, but you could also um, have a, an artifact in, in Maven uh, or something like that, right? Um, so you just need to, to have an Alfresco instance up and running. Well, not, not, not up and running yet because we need to um, put some modifications on it. One of, of, of them is um, we need to bring this uh, library that is the Gelf 4J uh, library. Um, well, if, if you are using uh, Maven, you can add it as, as this, as a dependency. If not, you can download it. Uh, it's a jar file, so maybe you want to put it in the um, Tomcashed uh, library folder, or if you are a bit more uh, nasty, uh, unzip the, the Alfresco word file and include it in the web lib, but I don't recommend that. Um, but will work, okay? Um, this is something different from, from a syslog um, standard facility. Um, um, the message of, or, the pay of, or, or the payload of a syslog is limited to um, 1,024 uh, bytes, and there is no um, a structure at all. And this is a, a GELF payload. You can see there are some uh, metadata. Um, short message uh, contains the, the meaningful message, but full message will contain all the stack trace, um, even more stuff that you can add. Timestamp is great for, you know, for sequence, um, uh, sequential purposes, and also you can add some additional uh, metadata um, over there, um, which is really, really useful. You could add, for instance, you know, the, the environment name in case that you want to have a, a, a gray log instance for all your environments and then you could filter by, yeah, so let me show you, let me see only the, the, the log for pre-production, maybe, something like that. Um, five minutes. It's, it's isn't it thirty minutes? Yeah, thirty minutes. But I have half a, half an hour, right? Don't know. Yeah, you got forty. No, I, there is seventeen minutes or in my presentation. <laughs> I I I I, I have. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, um, and you have to to include this, uh, this in the law for uh, Java property. Uh, basically, you are uh, creating a, a gray log to um, appender that it's using this facility and it's um, talking through a local host server in this case because everything is in the same uh, server in this particular uh, port. And the uh, additional fields that I mentioned earlier for for completing the, the payload. Um, I made a promise with, with Richard that I would take less than 30 minutes, so I think um, I'll give you just a couple of um, um, config uh, items. Um, so once we have everything up and running, we will need to create a, a, a new input. Um, if you remember before, it's going to communicate with Alfresco through UDP, so we just, just need to create a new UDP in input and you need to put the, the port um, and the address, uh, that is localhost in this case. And then you will see that um, it's running. I can show you now in the, in the app anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm going to the, to the demo. Um, cool. So. This is the gray log interface. This is the, the search when you can uh, run searches, right? Right now, nothing has happened in Alfresco in the lab in the last five minutes, so it's not going to to give me anything. By the way, this is um, um, the gray log instance in Docker, and I have an Alfresco here. 
Um, so something I can do. To be fair, um, Alfresco doesn't log too many messages, so it's it's tricky to have some meaningful messages uh, with a vanilla version of it. But if I list uh, the web scripts, oh, thank you, man. Thank you because of the Spartan race, I injured my back, so the chair is going to be useful. Um, so yeah, um, now something has been uh, logged. So if I come here, um, demo effect is not happening. Yeah, it's here, right? So it's picking up messages. You can also um, put some um, auto update in the in the page. And that is also um, an histogram. So um, if I, for instance, look for um, um, the activity in the in the last two hours, you can see that there's been some activity here and here that I was preparing the demo. Um, so something else that it's um, maybe more more useful is the is the dashboard. Um, I created an Alfresco dashboard, created this a matter of click on this button that I have in front of me. So I create, um, I have several um, um, charts here. Um, one of them is I created a dashboard for every time the, the web script um, register is, is launched. Um, so if, if I click on this, uh, there is a filter that I have here and it's aiming to execute every five minutes, but if, for instance, I run it for the last eight hours, you will see like this is being happening here a lot. Um, um, whenever a failed transformation happens, um, it's locked here. Um, I'm going to do a, a small um, exercise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the mic for a sec. I'm going to kill um, Open Office. So now it's telling me that Open Office disconnected unexpectedly obviously. Um, so if I go to um, Alfresco and I upload a new um, PowerPoint, it's, it's going to fail. Um, So something is happening here, typical can't transform exception. So if I go here and I update it, yeah, just locked. Um, I also created um, an alert, so if I get the um, the open office connection lost. I will receive an email. Um, probably I have received it, but you know, um, it's telling here anyway that one minute ago the open office connection has been uh, lost. So yeah, you you could receive alerts using um, this approach. The way, and I will finish uh, already. The way you have to configure is this is um, you go to input and you launch a new input, say GELF UDP, and you put the parameters here. Um, after that, you will have this running. You see, like, there is some messages being logged. Uh, you could click on here and you will see what messages you are receiving. But you know, essentially, it's really um, a straightforward. Also, if we want um, 
you know, to create new new dashboards or, or new charts. It's just a matter of searching something. Uh, okay. Um, and then you just add it to the dashboard. here okay so you know it's not something super fancy but it works really well um, I'm coming back to the presentation uh, I have only two final slides um, so I was expecting and, and even some of, of you guys already asked me about the difference between Raylog and, and ELK? Well, probably you, you have solved uh, or, or you've heard that people have solved a similar issue using ELK. Um, that's true. Um, they kind of, or they can solve the similar problems because uh, they have similar technologies. We've just realized, for instance, you know, that um, the GELF payload is a bit more sophisticated um, on, the, on the contrary, Kibana is more powerful, is more flexible, but the reality is that the Greylog UI is very uh, user-friendly to use and go straight to the, to the point, it's simpler. Um, but I'm, if you are using already uh, um, ELK and it's working for you, I'm not going to fight against uh, you, it's, it's your choice. Um, finally, you know, as... Uh, Summing up slide, you know, Greylog is simple, it's scalable, it's user-friendly, and it's uh, fit for the purpose of uh, centralized logging. Uh, allows you to uh, run search reports and, and alerts, and it's very suitable for new architectural trends, because even if we have just seen um, working only with, with, with Alfresco, you have the opportunity to, you know, to plug a uh, I don't know, 10, 12 Spring Book instances plus a Fresco plus a Drupal, and you will see everything uh, logging um, sequentially. Uh, important to, to let you know as well that if you bring Greylog to your architecture, it's becoming part of your architecture, meaning that you need to um, put resources and, 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 and scale it properly so you don't want a solution of your problem to become a different uh, problem. Um, so don't, don't let it be called, become a, a bottleneck. Um, that's it, I think. I think I made it in 25 minutes. Um, if you have any questions. How much time do we have for questions? We don't have time for questions. We'll have to catch you during the break. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I say one interesting thing. The introduction, uh, failure cascade. The way you do a tool like this, it just peaks. And this is in the general tool. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can find me in the breaks or in the dinner or between beer or whatever. Okay. Thank you.